And we welcome you to another episode of Hurry Hard, the Manitoba Curling Show here on Shaw TV. I am your host, Kevin Hirschfield, where today we come to you from the Charleswood Curling Club, the host site of this year's Manitoba Scotties Tournament of Hearts. Now, of course, the games will be played just down the road at the Eric Coy Arena, but this spot is where all the parties and all the social events will be happening. Now, we are actually filming this show in advance, so by the time you're seeing this, the Scotties will be either underway or already over, so you probably know who the winner is or who the team's faring well will be. So we're not going to focus a ton on previewing the tournament. We'll get actually the club's perspective on how they feel the tournament's going to go as well. And we also will talk to a few teams heading into the tournament uh, about their seasons and how they think things are going as well. So all that ahead here on this Hurry Hard. But first, a closer look at our feature club today, the Charleswood. The Charleswood Curling Club first opened its doors in 1946. The very first location was on the corner of Fairmont and uh, uh, Grant Avenue. At that time it was called Headley Avenue. But uh, that, was, that club was built all by volunteers. It's three sheet of ice. The current five sheet club on Grant Avenue officially opened in early 1956. One of the early attractions was an event called the Little Car Bond Spiel, where the winners received a brand new car. There was two cars they mostly uh, had uh, that would go to the winning team. It was Volkswagens and Datsuns as well. It was uh, a very popular spiel, and there was many. There was people that were so thrilled. Uh, everybody talked about it, everybody loved to come to Curlin. While the car spiel didn't last, the club's popularity has stayed strong through the years. Charleswood is very fortunate. Um, all our leagues are full, with the exception of one. Um, and our, we have a very strong junior program. We have 139 kids, so it's one of the largest in the city, if not the largest. Um, we have <clears throat> throughout the years, put a lot of people through that have gone on to become world champions, Olympic champions, Manitoba champions. How about this provincial junior championship club from the Charleswood, skipped by Jill Staub in 1991. There's a young Kelly Scott, or Kelly McKenzie as she was then known on the far right, and the girl second from left, you guessed it, a 17-year-old Jennifer Jones. And then there's this guy. You betcha, here he goes. The Spinnerama, the Stoughton Spinnerama. <laughs> Jeff Stoughton and his teams from the Charles would have won 11 Manitoba men's titles, three national titles, and two world championships. His banners are proudly displayed all over the place at Charleswood. It's a natural draw. People come because they want to see him here. They want to. They want to come and meet them. Um, so it does bring people to your club, for sure. And anytime we ask him, he comes out here. He comes out and spends time with our juniors. He ran a clinic just before Christmas to any of our curlers that wanted to come get a few pointers. So yeah, he's, he's quite involved still. A strong history and a bright future at the Charleswood Curling Club. So between here, the, the club itself, the amenities, the ice, the, the atmosphere that you create for the people, that, that's what brings them here and keeps it strong. Well, you may be watching this episode as the Scotties are just getting underway. If so, great action on the ice all weekend at the Eric Coy Arena, but off the ice as well at the Charleswood Curling Club. Here's Mike Strick from the Scotties Committee with more information. Friday night, we have a live band, the Arnold Street Collective coming in, free live band at the Charleswood Curling Club, nine o'clock. Uh, Saturday, we have the Bivers coming in again, well, live at nine o'clock again. Um, all weekend, we have a, a stick challenge, so get down for one dollar, come throw some stick, throw some rocks, see how close you can get to the button. Uh, there's also trivia challenges, theme nights each and every night. So lots of things going on over at the Charleswood Curling Club around the games that are going on. CharleswoodCurlingClub.com, uh, daily passes will be available on there. Also by curling, calling Curl Manitoba, uh, they can get tickets there or just showing up at the door. That's probably the best place as well. Come and get your tickets, daily, uh, game passes, youths, all that different awesome. stuff is available there. Deb McCreener, co-chair of this year's tournament, says preparation has been smooth and expects the Charleswood to do well. 
it's put it been a year in the making and we just pulled it all together and lots of help to Pearl Manitoba. They are huge for us and helped us all along the way. We would like to break even. If we break even, we'll be happy. All we want to do is put on a great event. Um, we know we're going to have great ice. We know we have, we're going to have great uh, curlers over there to, to entertain us. Uh, it is a small community and when I grew up here it was like everybody knew everybody and we it, kind of the same thing. Everybody kind of stays back here and um, moves back and so there's a lot of community oriented. Uh, there's a lot of people involved in community centers that we pull from and uh, the whole club has come, has come together and a lot of the local businesses as well have supported us tremendously so there's there's good support all around in, in Charleswood that's for sure. All right starting our chats with some of Manitoba's top women's curlers the skip of the 2016 Manitoba Provincial Women's Champions Carrie Anderson. Carrie the last time you joined us here on Hurry Hard you were preparing for another event the Canadian Mixed Championships you and your husband uh, went out to Nova Scotia and competed as part of Team Manitoba Braden Calvert the skip of that team as well and you guys ended up winning a silver medal now you've been to uh, Canadian Mixed Championships before. This was your best finish yet though. Um, how did this one compare to those previous Mixed Championships? Oh, it was, uh, it was really awesome. I, I, we had control of that final game and um, we, mine and Braden's Rock both picked and uh, we ended up giving up four. It was a heartbreaking loss. Um, it was really tough to, to do that, and especially so late in the game, right? So we didn't really have much of a chance to come back. But uh, we played so good all week, um, and Braden and I got um, like MVPs. Cool. So it was it was it was pretty it was pretty an awesome experience. Yeah, great time. Moving to your women's team, it's. Probably fair to say this wasn't the start you expected to the season. You didn't qualify for a lot of the events, but then the Canada Cup in Brandon came, you finished third there, and then I think the next week at the Boost National in Sault Ste. Marie, your team wins your first Grand Slam events ever. What changed uh, between those first couple of months and then those two events, the Canada Cup and the National? I think that time apart um, with uh, me and the girls, um, I think that's kind of what we needed to get our confidence back in us. And uh, we came out and I just had such a good feeling about Brandon that it was just going to be a great week. So we uh, came out there and we played our best every game and uh, we finished third. Um, we gave Rachel a great game but um, uh, we just had one bad end. So and then we carried that on to Sault Ste. Marie and we just we played so good there too and playing all international teams it was it was a great experience. and. Um, yeah, and then we had the Meridian uh, Spiel uh, a couple weeks ago. We played some great teams there, gave them some great games. So we weren't at our best, but um, we definitely have been practicing since then and getting on, um, getting our game back to where it should be. If so, how did winning a provincial championship like your team did last year, how did that change your team in any way? What's different about your team now after a kind of a monumental victory like that? Well, we're definitely uh, more comfortable now. Like after you, like you get over that hump and you're like, okay, hey, like you know what it takes to win. And um, so yeah, so we're kind of over it and we're feeling um, uh, very relaxed and and we just want to maybe go out there and just have a great week and uh, defend our title. I have to imagine down the road you're going to be thinking more and more about those Canadian Olympic curling trials. You've gotten a good jump start onto qualifying for those. How much is that on your mind here as we get closer and closer to that and as you go and hit the ice each time? Um, I don't really think about it too much. It's not something that plays in my mind because I just want to take one spiel at a time and, um, and maybe next year it'll start. We'll coming more real um, that we're so close to the trials so um, we definitely want to get some more points for that and uh, and look forward to next season as well to uh, for the pre-trials and trials. And with all these events that you've been at the Grand Slams now and for you personally the mixed how is how have yourself and how has the team been able to handle the extra busy schedule? Um, pretty good um, it's tough with um, like work schedules and everything like we all have full-time jobs so it's it's really uh, tough and we have I have an amazing employer to uh, let me take time off so we definitely want to thank them for all the support that they give us um, and yeah so we just uh, we it's it's a rough it's rough but it's it's doable so we really enjoy it and it's uh, 
It's a great time. Thank you so much, Carrie Anderson. Yeah, thank All right. you. Legend tells us the 78th Fraser Highland Regiment out of Scotland melted cannonballs to make iron curling stones so they could play in Quebec City in 1759 and 1760. The Fraser Highlanders were with General Wolfe at the Battle of the Plains of Abraham.